best-selling author and social researcher. Her name is Brene <coughs> Brown. She burst into public consciousness with her TED Talk in 2010. The Power of Vulnerability remains the site's fourth most popular talk. Listen to this. It has 36 million views. Wow. Today, Brene Brown is busy juggling consulting and speaking events at Fortune 500 companies, including IBM, Disney, and Google. Her new book focuses on how each of us can cultivate effective leadership. It's called Dare to Lead, Brave Work, Tough Conversations, Whole Hearts. Brene Brown joins us once again, first on CBS This Morning to talk about her latest book. It's always good to have you at the table, Brene Brown. Good morning. I it is morning. It is a masterpiece. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Love it. Thanks. Just the fact that you've had 36 million views yeah. says to me that people are very open to finding out more about this. But I know very few bosses and leaders that think yeah. it's okay to show vulnerability. But you say you can't be, you can't have courage without vulnerability. What do you mean? You know, it was interesting because I used to spend a lot of time when I'd go into these companies kind of evangelizing yeah. about vulnerability, it's important. Then one day I found myself on a military base talking to special forces and I just asked a simple question. Give me an example of courage that you've seen or witnessed in your life or that you know, you've done yourself that didn't require uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure, which is mm. the definition of vulnerability. Give mm. me a single example of courage that did not require that. And there was just silence until one guy just raised his hand and said, three tours, ma'am, there is no courage without vulnerability. And so now I just ask audiences that simple question. Give me an example of courage that doesn't require uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure. You say most people then, think of courage is a personality trait, not a skill. You say it's a skill. It's a skill set. I mean, we've been studying it for, I've been doing this work for 20 years, the last seven years, really looking at courage and leadership specifically, four skill sets. Mm -hmm. Can you rumble with vulnerability? Can you stay in tough things when they get uncomfortable and awkward, or do you tap out? Mm -hmm. Two, mm -hmm. and, and this is a hard one, living into your values. Are you clear about what your values are and have you operationalized those into behaviors? Do you know what behaviors support your values, what don't? Mm -hmm. Three, braving trust. Can you build trust and be trustworthy? Mm -hmm. And the last one, which I think was really interesting, was learning how to get back up, learning how to rise. Because we found that people are more willing to be courageous up front if they know how to rise. Yeah, I mean, that's why, I, sorry, John, that's why I called this a masterpiece. <laughs> because to just sum up everything, and then you write, courage is contagious. To scale daring leadership and build courage in teams and organizations, we have to cultivate a culture in which brave work, tough conversations, whole hearts, the expectation in armor is not unnecessary or rewarded. That's the thing, because people want to know how do we scale this type of behavior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Courage is incredibly contagious, as is fear, mm -hmm. as we can see in the yeah. world, um, as is scarcity. And so courage is contagious and we can teach it, we can learn it, we can measure it. And we have to create cultures where being armored all the time is not rewarded behavior. So first of all, as a disciple of the gifts of imperfect parenting, I have to say thank you. <laughs> now let's move on. And I don't, I hate to get uh, political, but yeah. um, one of the best leaders we have right now who has totally reformed a political party in his image, who's gotten two people on the Supreme Court and, and achieved other things, show, thinks showing vulnerability is the key to loss. Not showing vulnerability is in fact one of his signature traits. So that seems to be the opposite of what you're saying. Yeah, and I think, so that's, a, I, I'm glad we went there because here's the thing. John goes there. Yeah, John goes there. I'll go with you, John. Um, you can absolutely get away. I mean, you can, you can get masses of people behind you if you do two things. If you weaponize uncertainty, if you take people who are in uncertainty and, and guarantee them certainty and then give people someone to blame for their pain. Mm. I mean, you can, you can yes. do anything you want. Yeah. The problem with that is that fear has a short shelf life mm. and you cannot do that for very long. Mm -hmm. um, the question is always what kind of damage are you gonna do while you're able to do that? But I do not, I have seen no evidence and I'm reading Doris Kern Goodwin right now, so she's a, I'm a huge fan. Yes, yeah, her yeah. book on leadership. I don't think that's sustainable. 
Let me ask you this. I'm, I'm a leader in whatever I'm doing in my life. How do I be more vulnerable if I want to try and access this trait that is so important to leadership? So vulnerability is not disclosure. So let's, like, that's the big mythology, right? It's not like, I know a lot of leaders who show up and just ah, everything. That has nothing to do <laughs> right. with courage or vulnerability. <laughs> vulnerability is, can you manage uncertainty and risk and emotional exposure? Can you stay in the hard conversation? Can you tell the truth? Can you give feedback when it's hard? Can you ask for feedback when it's hard? Vulnerability is, I believe, and it's probably 60% of the book, the only path to courage. And it is the birthplace of innovation, creativity, trust, empathy. I love it when people call and say, hey, can you come talk to our company, Brene? We'd love to have you speak. Just don't mention like vulnerability. Yeah. And, and I, and I, and I, yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. But you yeah. said you right. hope that people that read this book, it will result in one behavior change for leaders that they should read it cover to cover on a flight. One behavior change that you think all leaders need is what? It's going to be simple. Clear as kind, unclear as unkind. Stop. Stop avoiding the tough conversations because you think you're being polite or kind to people. That's not kind. So Sister, breath, fresh air. Preach. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> so Love good. everything you say. It's so Clear true. Kind. Thank you. Thank you. Renee Brown, thank you so much. Thank y'all. Very nice.